Okay, my friends, here it is. The number one most requested video recently that I have got, and that is the update on the electroculture experimentation. So three months ago, I put out the video showing you how I was setting up the experimentation. And when I did that, I got tons of emails and comments and correspondences showing me your electroculture gardens, which is awesome. Uh, also, uh, comments and, and things, experience. But mostly, I got uh, a lot of people telling me that I had them wound the wrong way. And so, uh, then I did some more research, and the consensus is that you are supposed to have them in the northern hemisphere wound clockwise as you are looking down from the sky to the earth. And so, otherwise, it is zapping energy, pulling energy from the plants. And and pu putting it into the atmosphere so I just to see I left several of them like this wound the wrong way but then I made several more wound like this the uh, appropriate way but then I made several more uh, with a wooden core because many of you told me that they had to have a wooden core like this and I wound it clockwise facing down and then uh, stuck this end in the ground so it has been three months and at this point um, I can say it, based upon my experience and opinions that it is the results are definitive so uh let's go out into the garden and i'll show you guys and then when we come back uh i will tell you my final thoughts and some of it might surprise you okay my friends here we go i'm going to take you through the garden and show you several different examples some before and after direct experimentations each one's going to be more impactful and illustrious of the point than the last so let us begin here we are three months ago. We place a uh, electroculture antenna into the thing of rosemary. Now fast forward three months and we can see everything is very luscious. The rosemary, the basil, and the um, marigolds are all luscious. So here is the one with the electroculture antenna. And we can see that it's not really much different than the other ones. That maybe there's some slight differences, uh, but that could be due to many factors. So in fact, if we look at them, we can see that the ones without the antenna are, might be a little bit more vigorous. But even that can be, uh, there's such variant, variation between plant to plant. We can see this pepper plant, though, furthest from the electroculture antenna is doing really well. But then again, the pepper plants always do well right here. And the basil and the marigolds always do well right here. So that's not much of an experiment. And here we are with the beets, which are bursting with life, enormous beets, very luscious, but no electroculture. So let us see here, a direct experimentation. Here we are three months ago, and I have one of the, the uh, antennas wound the wrong way. Since then, I wound it the right way and replaced it with another one, uh, but I didn't film that. So here it is, we have uh, the electroculture experiment. Here we are three months later, and we can see that is the one with the uh, uh, antenna. Now we can see by looking at them that we don't really notice much of a difference. In fact, uh, again, sort of this one away from the antenna seems to be the tallest, but that's not really a good description of anything. Uh, so we can see here is the antenna under this one, and it looks pretty much like the rest of them. It doesn't really look much different. I didn't notice anything along the season. So uh, here we are uh, with another experimentation up against the fence, and here we uh, have the antenna three months later. And we can see that this is pretty healthy. These are all doing pretty well. Uh, these are the Maduras uh, honey melons from uh, Baker Creek Seeds. And they are super delicious and the plants are growing nice and healthy. But what I want to show you is uh, the opposite side of the fence where there is no electroculture. But there is something else that I've used that's very special. And you will see here this tomato. This is one tomato plant, guys. And it is absolutely the peak of healthy. It, it is perfect. There's not the slightest sign of disease or pest pressure whatsoever. It's loaded with fruit and they're not ripe yet because this is a very slow season. Uh, but then right directly next to it, look at this mammoth squash plant. This is one uh, squash plant. It's a cross between the Tahitian and the butternut. And it is super vigorous, climbing all over the fence. Now, what I want to show you, though, is this special thing down here. Uh, it's not electroculture, but instead it is the soil food web because we have the compost bin and I planted one squash plant uh, right at the base of the compost bin and utilizing the soil food web. Guys, look at how healthy this plant is. I mean, there's not the slightest sign of pest pressure or disease. There's at least a dozen massive fat squash that this thing is producing. 
And this is because it has everything that it needs because of the compost bin. The soil food web will provide all that the plant needs. Nothing to do with electroculture here. So let us continue our tour. And we can see that these uh, cucumbers are doing pretty well. Uh, although they're a little bit over nitrogen absorbed because I had a pile of chicken manure right here. Uh, so they're a little bit softer and more disease prone than they should have been. But I should have known better and removed the pile of chicken manure uh, uh, earlier. But still, they're producing a boatload of cucumbers. These are China Jade Cucumber, nice and luscious. Everything is growing well. So let us rewind again three months and we place the electroculture antenna right here. And we're going to actually place another one on the left pot of this uh, and it's on the south side of the plant yes and uh, then we can fast forward three months and we will see everything is nice and luscious the grasses are luscious and the electroculture antenna over here is not really much different but over here you can see that this is very luscious and the reason that these flowers and this grass is so luscious one of the reasons is because I applied the high quality aerated compost tea to this side and this gives the plants all the microorganisms that it needs to thrive look at this Indiana giant coxcomb it is just beginning its life guys we're only halfway through summer these are all gonna be bigger and fatter so let us look at the sage this is culinary grade sage and we are growing it out so when we look here we can see that the uh, one on the left that this this grass is much bigger than the one on the left much bigger and more luscious now we could uh, look deeper into this and we can see this massive enormous uh, fennel plant is actually sort of releasing some uh, allelopathic hormones and that's what kept the grass low nothing else but we can see here that the one with the uh, electroculture isn't much different it might be a little bit bigger see here it is it might be a little bit uh, more vibrant but it's hard to tell because on the other side it is being totally crowded out by all the sage and the mint and the um, the uh, um, chard that we have growing here so you see how everything is growing really well all the mint I let go to seed the chard back here is love and life now I want to show you another thing about the onions we had a crazy good onion harvest this year nice big and vigorous and uh, it had nothing to do with electroculture it had everything to do with the soil food web and again my house plants you put them outside and look at all this new growth pay attention to the new growth that's from the weather now here is something surprising this one on the right and the one on the left there's two pepper plants here they were planted the exact same day from the same seeds had the same nutrients had the exact same everything now which one do you think has electroculture in it you see this one here is mega healthy and it has all kinds of good peppers on it they're loaded down there here's the predator everything is nice and healthy on this one okay so as opposed to the other one directly next to it which is still pretty healthy there's there's peppers and stuff yeah but it's not even half the size of the other one what is causing this now neither of these plants has electroculture this is just the natural variation in plants it happens all the time no matter what even if you give them all the best see how healthy this one is as opposed to this one this just never took off and that's just the way it goes guys it happens all the time now look at these tiny little cute little baby squash plants the three months ago now look at them these mammoth squash plants and I want you to notice the one on the far left is producing five to ten a day the one on the far right is producing one to two a day even though they're both nice and vigorous they've got pollinators all over the place they've got uh, uh, blossoms and they're very nice and healthy but what's the difference which one has the electroculture the one that's producing uh, three times the amount as the other one no neither of them have the electroculture guys and they are producing boatloads of these squash every single day I mean more than I can possibly eat I have to give these away to so many people and it has nothing to do with any type of electroculture the variation has nothing to do with it it's just the way it is 
Now, what it does have to do with, though, is the four inch layer of horse manure that I put down in the fall time, along with wood ash and uh, uh, some of the other fertilizers. Now, you can see the soil below it is nice and luscious, and uh, this is going to have everything that the plant needs, guys. You do not need to focus on any kind of magic or gimmick or anything like that. You just work with the soil food web and you will have results because nature has already perfected this, my friends. So my friends, instead of focusing on putting more copper antennas into the ground, let us instead focus on the fundamentals of gardening, the soil food web. Feed the life in the soil and they will feed you. No gimmicks, no magic tricks, nothing. Nature has already perfected this for thousands of years. So there you have it, my friends. I can say confidently, based upon my experience, my experimentation and the observation over the season and the results, that this type of electroculture does absolutely nothing. It doesn't matter if it's wound clockwise, anti-clockwise, if it's got a wood core, if it doesn't have a wood core, if it's on the south side of the plant, the north side of the plant, none of it makes any difference whatsoever. And that is my final answer. So let us instead focus on what we know works, and that is feeding the life in the soil. My friends, if you utilize the plethora of techniques that is on this channel, you will have success. It's guaranteed. So leave your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. And now, yes, we can talk about the electroculture stuff when we do the live Q&A, which is every Saturday at 12 noon Eastern time right here on this channel. I will see you there, my friends.